Greetings and peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I have the honor and privilege of being joined by my brother, Caleb Adams from North Carolina. Caleb has uh, played a huge part in my journey. Uh, going back, he has always supported me, my work, and when I was in the early stages of my YouTube channel and going through the different Sufi experiences. Caleb, I am grateful for him and he has played uh, a great role in my life in terms of my Sufi journey and myself having the epiphanies that I do. I don't claim to have all the answers in my life. It's we, we are who we are today. It's because of the brothers that get placed in our lives, our brothers, our friends, our guides, and we're there to eat, guide each other home in many ways. Uh, Caleb has had a very fascinating story growing up as an all-American kid in North Carolina and going from Christianity to Sufism. So I wanted to have Caleb on the show and ask him, who is Caleb Adams and how, he, how did he become who he is today? And with that, assalamu alaikum and greetings to my dear brother and friend. Thank you for being here. Alaikum salam. No, it's an honor. No, uh, like you said, I've always really appreciated what you're doing with the platform and, you know, bringing all these different people together. So that's, that's, it's beautiful to be here. Um, but yeah, I guess like, where do you, where do you start the journey? I mean, I think fundamentally all of our spiritual journey starts the moment we're born. Um, but, you know, like you said, I'd grown up, you know, pretty, um, exclusively exposed to Christianity. And I think I learned a lot from that. Um, having a really deep love for like the Bible at an early age, just, uh, I think that like led me to a lot of the stuff I would do later in terms of having that passion to learn more and having that passion to study. Um, and I think as I got older, there were, there was a certain point where I was just looking for more. There was like an intuition that there was more than what I was being given, even in just the words of Jesus or the prophet Isa, you know, peace be upon him. Mm. There was a sense, an intuition that there was a deeper understanding there, but I didn't necessarily have access to that. Um, and so I went through a lot of different stuff in that journey. You know, I, a big part of it was starting just a daily meditation practice that was super helpful. And even that, like then, even just from the understanding I've been given growing up and doing that practice every day, that let me to start led me to start being able to see some of the deeper truths in those scriptures and to really be able to understand even what prophet Jesus was saying at a deeper level. Um, yes. And so through that, I kind of started studying some of the things that were connected to my tradition, you know, like uh, Gnosticism, uh, Kabbalistic thought, and then eventually uh, started through various influences reading into Sufism and was, you know, but every text I could find was like, you know, books are good but you have to have a teacher you have to have a teacher and you know so i'm here in north carolina like where am i gonna ever learn sufism you know how is that ever going to become a reality and you know three or four months later i stumbled across some of sheikh sufi's videos and you know i was lucky enough to email him and start to uh build a relationship with him and be able to be initiated into morid and eventually the tajani tarika and start to be able to do some of those practices on a daily basis and it's just, I mean, it's been uh, three years of an amazing journey, ups and downs, you know, uh, but one of our shake, shake, shaky profile says the harder the better. So I've definitely learned that lesson, but, you know, you can always, you know, regardless of what tradition you're in, like having that daily practice lets you have a totally different perspectives on the trials and actually begin to see the blessings in those trials, you know. Yeah, thank you, Brother Caleb. And that, that's absolutely right, because in today's chaotic times, we need some kind of a spiritual practice to ground us, help us become better human beings, and realize that what are, the, what are these scriptures teaching us, where in the Bible and the Gospels, you have the teaching of Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, and the Quran, it's the word of Allah, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And you have all of these different traditions, Brother Caleb, that are basically teaching you that one fundamental truth about God and about humanity and about yourself. So what can you uh, tell uh, the populace that's watching this right now, how Islam and Sufism, also growing up with your Christian background in America, how, how, how has it changed your outlook on this life? Yeah, well, I think, I think like part of it was what you said, just that having a daily practice, like it's so essential right now. Because yes. it's like, if you don't have that deeper connection to the divine, if you don't have 
Like, I don't know how you could exist in this reality right now. You know, I mean, it's very important. Like, and this is something I talk to with a lot of my friends who are involved in political uh, organization and that kind of thing. Like, that's so key. And I think there's a lot of people probably in the spiritual world that could be doing more of that. But I'm like, just at a certain point, you've got to be doing something every day to refresh yourself if you're going yes. out of the world and fighting those struggles or you're going to become burnout and you're not going to be the best version of yourself to serve other people, you know, and that's something I had to learn for myself a lot. Cause you know, you want to help other people. And there's mm -hmm. a certain point where if you're not doing that work on yourself, that you can't even be the best help you can be to other people. So I think that's been the biggest thing. I mean, it sounds simple, but like the biggest thing that I, one of the biggest things I think I've learned from Sheikh Sufi is just that importance of a daily practice. And again, that's something you can apply regardless of whatever tradition you're in. I mean, I think if you don't have a daily practice and you're looking for something, Sufism would be a great place to look. But at the same time, like every tradition has some kind of daily practice you can incorporate like that. And that's like, again, like I think just for any of us to be able to operate in the world, you know, everybody listening to you is going to have different, a different purpose, a different thing there's, they could help with in whatever yes. arena, in whatever world they're living in. But I truly think from both my experience and talking to other people, that daily practice is going to help them regardless of whatever arena or whatever they're trying to live out and in whatever way they're trying to benefit their local communities. Um, Thank you, so brother. Caleb. One of the biggest and, things. You know, that's, that's a great point that you make out that in today's world, with how everything is chaotic, we do need that aspect of grounding ourselves. And right now, especially in 2022 and moving forwards, it's going to be so much chaos that's on the way with this next eight to nine year cycle that's changing the world as we know it. Relationships are changing, jobs are changing, the education system is being upside down. You could go outside and feel like there's some kind of a uh, tension in the air or like change in the air. Anywhere you go, I, I was recently in London, I felt the same there. Like, is this the same place that I was uh, two years ago? Um, in Philadelphia, where I'm at, you could go to the city and it just feels empty. Like, things just feel empty you realize it's something has changed and it's important that instead of us losing ourselves mentally or spiritually or emotionally we have to ground ourselves and i agree with you you can find a shake and find a guide but if you're unwilling to do the work then that's your you have to take the responsibility for that because the shake is there as your guide and friend but if you're not going to do it then you're not reciprocating that relationship and that foundation properly so I appreciate my brother, you pointing that out, which goes to my next question is, how, how would you address those people in the Western world that see Islam as a threat or they don't see, they see Islam with doubts and suspicions? Um, I think, I mean, I think my first, uh, first response would just be, you've been lied to in a really, in a really unfortunate and deep way, because I mean, regardless of any, and this is a point you've made before as well, like any school of thought you go into, you're going to have people, I don't care if you're talking about secular people, atheists, Christians, mm -hmm. whatever, you're going to find people who are coming in the name of that who aren't necessarily representing the best aspects of that. Exactly. Like that's just going to be the reality. But I challenge anyone, I mean, if nothing else, sit down for yourself and actually read the Quran. Mm -hmm. And if you are in a place where you can talk to actual Muslims and I guarantee you, your opinion will change very quickly. You know, like it's just, it's not, that's not the message that's presented. I mean, the message the Quran presents, I think is incredibly perennialist and incredibly universal mm -hmm. and incredibly accepting of other, you know, I mean, it's, it's about, you know, I mean, it makes it clear that whether you're Christian, Jew, Sabian, Muslim, as long as you're righteous, that's the point you're going to be judged yes. on. And again, this is the reason I love your channel because you're so great at illustrating that point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that's the things, but it's, it's unfortunate because you're hundred percent right. Like, especially me being in the Bible belt in a more conservative area, that's not the perception 95% of people have. And it's really unfortunate, but you mm -hmm. know, I think the good part of that is that's going to change because it, at a certain point, as more people are exposed to Islam and actually meet Muslims and get to know them for themselves, I just mm -hmm. don't think you can keep that perception. You know what I mean? Like nobody yeah. can see yeah. the work you're doing and the work so many other people are doing right now and have that, you know, more negative perception. So, you know, God willing, hopefully that's going to change. 
is Indeed, more that brother. the true Islam gets out there. Indeed. And I, and I thank you because of your uh, love, brotherhood, and honesty. And that's important we have that in today's world because they, they want us to be divided based on race, religion, where you live, what you believe. But the universal message of Islam and the Holy Quran and what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, that I want all of you to become one ummah. And ummah mm. means one, one community. Uh, you ha all have to be equal. No one's above you or beneath you. You look somebody that's a, a male or a female, a different complexion, different belief, and you give, give them the same respect that you would give to your fathers, to your mothers, to your sisters. And that's the world we have to envision right now where there's so much hatred and chaos, my brother. Which goes to my next question is, how has Islam and Sufism made your life better? Wow, that's, that's, there's, I mean, there's so much I could say. I mean, I think, I think one of the biggest things that comes, I think like, first of all, you were talking about the importance of having a teacher. And I yes. think that just my relationship with Sheikh Sufi has been essential because, you know, I mean, I worked and did the spiritual work the best I could by myself for a really long time. But I think there's just a certain point where that relationship does become essential, you know, and I think there's a lot of Western people because of, for good reasons, because institutional religion has been abused in the West a lot of times. So sometimes they might be more reluctant to go to a teacher and that's understandable. But at the same time, you have to also look at it in the sense of in any other field of study, if you wanted to learn martial arts, if you wanted to learn a trade, you would go to somebody who's been doing that trade for 20 or 30 years. There's certain yeah. things you're going to learn from somebody who's been on this path for 20 or 30 years even just watching them, even if they never say a word mm -hmm. that you could never get from a book. And I mean, that's something you'll find that's not new. Any Sufi or esoteric master you read is going to tell you that. So mm -hmm. I think that's been one of the biggest things is just actually through Sufism, finding a true teacher because most people, and I'm super fortunate to have that because that's rare in the West, you yes. know, there are a lot of charlatans. And again, that's why I have sympathy for the people who are reluctant to go to a teacher, because there are people out there who abuse that, that relationship. Yes. Um, so, you know, I would say if you have the ability to find a teacher, that's a great thing. Obviously, do use discretion and don't immediately jump into anything because there is potential for abuse in that relationship. So, you know, there has to be a balance there. Um, and then, you know, too, like beyond the teacher, just having a community of people who are striving toward that same thing because again I was very much doing this journey for alone for a long time and so you know having some brothers in the Mordor that I can actually talk to in my journey and you know brothers like you who mm -hmm. you know I mean how often do we have conversations where like man we're going through the same thing and learning the same lessons just in completely different situations sure and so just having that and to have that confirmation and to have other people because we're all human we're all limited mm -hmm. but like when two or three of us can get together, we can start to see things that we wouldn't necessarily see just from my point of view. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that, that aspect of it has been, and then, I mean, just having the spiritual tradition there, I mean, the Islamic slash Sufi tradition is so rich. I mean, we could talk for hours about all the different teachers I've learned from and been able to read and been able to just, just that like is so rich. I mean, just the amount, of spiritual wisdom I've learned from people like Ibn Arabi or any of yes. these great teachers in the Islamic tradition, like it's completely changed my perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's, again, I think that's something a lot of people in the West because of the way tra traditions and religions have been presented, like the idea of a tradition is almost a bad thing, sure. but I think it's tradition. Isn't something it's not to be looked at as something that's imposed upon you because it's not like, if you look at the Sufic tradition, it's not like, everybody's agreeing like it's a conversation like it's a relationship um that you go into these traditions and you have to obviously you use your own judgment your own discretion to take the best part but mm -hmm. like there's also a danger in what a lot of people in the west do of like i'm just gonna solely use my own judgment and ignore these traditions and i think they're losing something there because there's a reason this again there's a reason that in any other field you go to, you talk to the people who have walked that journey before. Yes. So. I, I, I thank you, my brother, because, you know, in the Western world, they have this concept of individualism where mm -hmm. they tell you just worry about yourself and don't worry about the other person. 
that eliminates the whole concept of God and the brotherhood and us being there for each other, companionship. If you look at the stories of Moses, Solomon, David, Abraham, Muhammad, all these great prophets and messengers, peace and blessings be upon all of them. They taught you that they didn't get to their destination by themselves. They had their companions, their friends, the Sahabas, the disciples. Mm. It, it, the story wouldn't be complete if they weren't there. So the aspect of having uh, like-minded brothers around you, and even in Sufism, they tell you that if you don't have a sheikh or a guide or a teacher, the shaitan is your sheikh. And that is mm. the aspect of why many in the West are in darkness right now with the uh, aspects of relationships, marriages, people are just not respecting that boundary with each other no more with the male and the female, female and the male. I see so many people going through so many stuff, uh, people that are traumatized, instead of finding healing, they're hypersexualized and they're jumping from one relation to another, instead of getting the help that they need. So instead of helping their own selves, they end up ruining many people in the process. So that, that's not healthy. And that, that's something that has been the downfall of the Western world, in my opinion. And it's important that we find these spiritual practices. And it's nothing wrong to admit that, okay, there was something in the past that messed me up, but let me be a better person about it. Find somebody that I can learn from and apply that to my life. And, you know, a lot of it leads to mental health problems too, where not just relation issues, but they end up falling into isolation, staying away from family because in order to feel secure. And that's just a lifelong damaging trauma that I've seen in this country, my brother. It's so important. I cannot stress this enough. And what you said is so important that why these teachings are needed in today's world and not to neglect it. But at the same time, like you said, had to have discernment against uh, fake gurus and charlatans who are there to exploit you financially or sexually or in uh, any other way that's out there, which, you know, many can fall astray to, unfortunately, and why one must be mindful and doing the correct research, which goes to my next question, Brother Caleb. If today was your last day on earth, what would you tell the people that you love and that they love you? What message would you leave behind for humanity in these chaotic times for those that love you, my brother? If hypothetically every day could be last for any of us. Right. Absolutely. Man, I think I think the biggest thing is, I mean, it might be simple, but like the biggest thing that comes to me is just you know, and I mean, a lot of this conversation, we've already been dealing with this, but just that sense of brotherhood. And I mean, sometimes mm. it's the simplest things that are the most important. And I mean, these times are very difficult for everybody. And yes. we're going to have to put aside the small things and po focus on the big things, you know, and again, mm -hmm. this is something I think your channel does a great job of, like, we've got to find the common values amongst people that we can agree on and that we can build on and not let the petty disagreements or the small things necessarily separate us because there's so many different agendas. There's so many different things going on in the world right now. If we can get any brotherhood together, that's actually built on righteousness and actually built on divine principles, that's going to go so far. And again, there's so much fake spirituality out there in the world right now. Mm -hmm. the real thing when people see it it's very attractive people instantly see it and that's something yes. i've really seen again with with through exposure to the sufi stuff is and i i know like you've been around sheikh sufi like there's that uh, like you can see there's people who have no idea what sufism is no idea what any of this is but there's that instant connection that instant love that is just generated mm -hmm. from him being in a room you know and if any of us can cultivate that, and we can start to cultivate that as a community, you know, like Sufis talk about there's the language of the mouth and then there's the language of the heart. And I think that's, that's one reason he's such an effective teacher. He's teaching from there, you know? Yes, um, yes. And, you know, I, I just strive to cultivate that myself. And if all of us can have even a little bit of that, that brotherhood. And again, like you were saying, like being able to get past these divisions that the people in power they have an agenda to keep us divided you know they have an agenda a reason that they want christians and muslims to be fighting why they mm -hmm. want jews and muslims to be fighting and i don't think any of that is really coming from the text or coming from the traditions and we have mm -hmm. to see that and we have to be able to and you know again this is something that i've seen with the Mord brotherhood that i really love in mm -hmm. the sense of 
they have a tradition that's so accommodating of different paths. And, you know, there's stories of Christians coming to Saren Sally, who, who was, you know, Sheikh Sufi Sheikh, yes, and having yes. him pray for them, you know? And it's like, if we, I think the more we can bring that into our world, the more we're going to be able to start to see the new thing that's coming out of all this destruction that's going on now. Thank you, my brother. And, you know, it's uh, to reiterate what you're saying, it says in Surah 2, verse 62, that is, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, Muslim, Christian, mm. whatever path you follow, as long as you believe in a supreme being and you do the right thing, then on the day of judgment, you shall have no grief. And that's the ultimate truth. It doesn't tell us that Christians and Jews are infidels because in Surah 49, verse 10, that's supported, saying that anyone that's a believer is part of the brotherhood. So mankind, the believers are but one brotherhood. So make peace between your brothers and be mindful of God so that you may be shown mercy. And that reiterates to Psalm 133. Behold, how good it is for brethren to dwell in unity. So what Christianity is teaching you, what Islam is teaching you, do good for yourself, do good for your neighbor. It's all teaching you the same thing. So if I'm here in Philadelphia, there are six different ways for me to get to New York City. I can get in a car. I could drive in a car through I-95 and get up there. I can catch a bus. I can go to the Amtrak. I can uh, do catch a coach. It's five, six different ways I can get to that destination, but it's taking me to the same place. So that's what all of these religions and philosophies are. It's all you do what's right for you. As long as you're being good to yourself, others, and you're not hurting or exploiting anybody. That is the main thing because the creator, one of the 99 names of Allah is Al-Basir, and he's all hearing and all seeing. So he knows what's in your heart. And one of the great Sufi teachers has taught me, including Sheikh Sufi, is that one who has a pure heart, any dark, malevolent things coming after you, it gets returned to them times 10. <laughs> it's the purity of the heart. If you have a pure heart, you have the greatest weapon in this life because no, no one or nothing can touch you. And, that, and I can testify on that. And I know Brother Caleb can. Absolutely. Which, you know, goes to my next question my brother is you have seen all of these different paths that are out there and you have experienced everything so what has islam given you what others have not satisfied within yourself mm. yeah i think i think i mean i think a big part of it for me again goes back to that reality of having a teacher um, I think just because like you can find a lot of practices within Christianity that have been preserved, but I think it's mm -hmm. very hard to find like they're out there, but it's very hard to find like a true teacher in Christian mysticism that has like a really preserved tradition. So, you know, yes. there's that principle in the in Sufism that you have to take the hand that took the hand that took the hand, you know, and so like it's just like <clears throat> it's hard to describe to somebody who hasn't had that experience. But like when you have that experience of connecting to that authentic lineage, mm -hmm. like there's just a def definite experiential difference to just doing a practice by yourself in my experience. I mean, not to say that there's not a benefit if you're just meditating, like that's wonderful, but there's something different that comes with having that connection and having that lineage. Um and then, too, I mean, even just, like, reading the Quran, like, just having that, like, it's such a source of wisdom and such a source of uh, beauty, even. I think, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's that's been hugely inspirational in my journey, you know. Indeed, my brother, and that, that's absolutely true. I agree with that. Now, with your wisdom, Brother Caleb, how do you see these next 10 years going in terms of uh, technology and AI kind of uh, limiting human connections day by day, mm. personal interactions. People don't want to marry anymore. They don't want to get into relations anymore. From your spiritual insight, my brother, how do you see these next eight to 10 years going? Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's obviously a lot of stuff that could be potentially dangerous on the horizon and stuff that we're already seeing. Yes. But I think one of the good things that I see unfortunately from what it had to take but i think a lot of people are starting to see what you're talking about more post covid than they would have two or three years ago like i think mm -hmm. people are starting to see that the system we have now doesn't work and i think people are 
from what I see both in terms of like looking at online communities and just in my day-to-day personal reactions, I feel like a lot of people are looking for what is the next thing? What is the next? Cause you know, I mean, people are, people's religious institutions are failing. People are, I mean, if you look at the numbers yes, of people who yes. have left religious institutions after COVID, it's insane. You know, the political institutions aren't working. So I think, and I think that's why these conversations are so important because nobody, like you said, no one person is going to have the answer of like, what does the next thing that comes out of this look like? Mm -hmm. But I think we also have a unique, we're at a unique point where we have a lot more say in that and a lot more, especially through platforms like this, a lot more potential influence on where that could go. So I, I, I don't think I'm, intelligent enough to say where it's going to go but i can definitely see that it is to a point where people are looking they're not happy with where we're at and they're looking for something different now the problem is there's a hundred things out there to distract them and be like oh here's the new different paradigm that's going to save you you know and that's (laughs) unfortunate and that definitely exists but i think at the same time it is good that there's that impulse there of like this isn't working we need something else like and i think that's it's very apparent to me like I said, both of my personal interactions and just looking at the culture more yeah. largely. I, I, I thank you for that, my brother. And yes, there is that intuition and feeling in the air. Everyone knows that this, uh, like a hamster in a wheel, it's mm. not going anywhere. It's just going in a circle. <laughs> right. Right. He thinks he's getting somewhere, but he's just spinning around in a loop. So that's what this system is doing to us, my brother. And it's people see that, okay, did I just come here to pay bills and die? I mean, if you look at the system here, you could have a house and spend 30 years paying off the mortgage and you just miss one payment to the local uh, town that you're in for the tax payment. The next day, they'll do put a lien on it, do the sheriff's sale and kick you right out of your home. You right. want to fix something in, in your home, you have to get a permit from them. So even if you paid off the house, so what do you really own at the end of the day? That's what I tell the American people. You don't own anything. Just stop worrying about it. Just enjoy your life. Because at that time of your life, you're not you're not gonna get you're not gonna get it back. Incorporate that by spending time with your family, with yourself, with your loved ones. Have some kind of a spiritual practice. And I cannot stress this enough, brother Caleb. Uh, every single video that I did on my YouTube channel has been on on my old iPhone six. I don't have a fancy fancy laptop, fancy studio, fancy equipment. I'm here in my room. Everyone knows what my room looks like. So that, that's basically it, that if I can do all of this just from my phone, then every person out there who has a message to share, you have a medium, you have all of these apps and platforms, put your message out there. And it's important that we encourage everyone is if you have something to share, who knows your, your insight or your answer might end up saving the world. Somebody at the right time, at the right place will, will hear your words and who knows how many destinies you will affect just with your presence alone. And, you know, that's that's what I would like to ask Brother Caleb is uh, right now going into these next few years, what forms of spiritual practices, my brother, and aspects of searching for knowledge do you recommend for those that are feeling lost and hopeless? Like, what, what can you tell them? Like, is there light at the end of the tunnel? And what can you tell them in terms of knowledge, self-reflection and doing doing the right thing in, in, in terms of your experiences? Yeah, I mean, I think the two biggest, uh, I mean, first of all, like just just the the one spiritual practice anybody can do that mm-hmm. is always going to be beneficial is service. Like service to other people, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to actualize some of the higher aspects of the human. Because it's very, if you do service long enough, it's going to be a lot harder to be selfish because you're going to start seeing people whose situations who are a lot worse than yours. You know what I mean? You're going to start seeing the condition the world's actually in. It's a lot harder to be caught up in self, you know? And I mean, obviously, I you know, we both have the Morid connection and, you know, we have the example of Shaky Brafal, who his whole path is, you know, just chanting the names of God and doing the work for the people and feeding yes. people. And anybody can do that. Mm-hmm. And then to go to that other aspect, the, the, the chanting the names of God, that's something that I recommend, whether you call it mantra, you call it zikr, you call it japa, you just call it prayer. Like 
it's and it, again it's something that's really big in sufism you know we we do zikr we chant the names of god but again i would say this is something that i tell people around here like this is applicable to any tradition like if you're a christian and you're not comfortable necessarily dealing with another another tradition find your favorite verse find a good short verse and every time you're feeling stressed out every time you're feeling having some kind of worry having some kind of anxiety say that verse a hundred times Mm-hmm. And at a certain point, like you're going to see the effects of that. And then that person's going to want to do it more. It's just natural because you're going to see the benefit of it. And I've mm-hmm. seen that with so many people. Um, so that would be, you know, service and then, you know, doing some kind of uh, because and the thing about that is like, you know, meditation is really great, but people's schedules are crazy. Like the great thing about chanting these names is you can do that while you're driving. You can do that while you're working. You can do that, you know. I mean, if you have the space and you have the time to sit down and just focus on those names for an hour a day, that's beautiful too. But if you don't have that time and you've got, you know, five kids to take care of, you can be chanting those names while you're dealing with that situation. And I would suggest Mm -hmm. that it might make that situation a little bit easier. You know, I I agree, my brother. And, you know, it's important you say that because words are spells in a way. Mm, So what, what you're, what you're putting out there in terms of, let's say, Hail Mary's or the Lord's prayers or Zickers or the Buddhist chanting, everything you're putting out there is like a word salad of protection and shield that goes around you. And you're putting those spells in motion and in manifestation. And that does help you in many ways. And I, I, I confirmed that as well, that that has saved me from many moments of despair. And in terms of, yeah, please. No, something I tell people is like what a lot of us don't realize is we're already doing zikr all the time. A lot of us, mm-hmm. unfortunately, have just been trained with a negative zikr. You know, that's where I found, at least within myself, my own experience, that's where a lot of anxiety or whatever comes from. We have certain thoughts that we might not even recognize until we become more conscious of our thoughts that are repeating all the time, certain destructive or negative. Or, I mean, even in the culture we live in, like, do you know how much just advertising we have in our subconscious? You know what I mean? Like how much just like McDonald's and, you know, whatever else (laughs) we have in our subconscious, like we're, we have so much both within like what we've been trained in from our society to think in more negative ways. And then with all the advertising, Mm -hmm. there's so much already in that subconscious. You have to be doing something to correct that and be putting something more positive in that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. My brother, we have to be able to get out of that programming that the system has placed us in where we're, all we're watching on TV are like Coca-Cola cola bottles. And as soon as you go into the store, that's the first thing your mind will pick up on and you're going to get it because you were programmed to do so. And in terms of the service, I believe that is very important. And it reminds me of a story Sheikh Sufi shared uh, with, with the uh, group one time where they were talking about this man during the time of the prophet, peace be upon him. That was a very pious man. He was in the masjid. He was praying five times a day. He was doing everything. And then the prophet asked uh, the people who is feeding him, who is uh, giving him uh, his toiletries and making sure he's able to sustain himself. And they saying, we are. And the prophet said, you're better than him. So I'm <laughs> glad, very glad you pointed that out. And this is something I see in the Sikh communities as well. Mm. If you go to the Sikh temples, their main core, because Sikh- Sikhism is like a mix between Sufism and Hinduism. And what they, they teach you that aspect is the greatest thing you could do to serve God is to serve others. And that is so important, my brother, in this society where individualism is pro- uh, promoted and I could be outside and there are homeless people right now outside freezing to death and people can walk right past them and not even look at them. And you realize, where did we lose our humanity? Where, 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 did, where did it all go wrong for a situation like that to occur? Where you could see somebody laying on the floor, freezing to death, you're wearing a nice jacket, you're going around, you have food, you have money. And it's, it's crazy because it reminds me of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani's story where he was walking with his disciples and he said, God could put me in his situation overnight. So we must always be humble, my brother. We must never forget that your whole life can change in the span of a second. Your whole world can turn upside down in a matter of minutes. So it's, it's important we don't forget that, the aspect of being humble in a society where being humble is not promoted. And we, we need that, my brother, more than ever. And which goes to my next question, Brother Caleb, is basically yourself coming from Christianity to Islam, how has your local community or those around you have viewed that? Have they welcomed it? And if so, in which way have they welcomed this identity and this path that you have chosen? 
Yeah, well, I think it's, I think it's like part of it comes back to like, I think like I think about that stuff in a slightly different way than a lot of people would like in the sense of, I mean, one thing I've thought about a lot recently, there's a, a, a thinker, David Bentley Hart, who talks a lot about like how the word religion has changed over time. And he talks mm-hmm. about like how, even if you go back to some of the earlier like European cultures or some of the early Christian cultures, when they said like religious they were basically saying like a righteous person who was near to God. There wasn't yes. like this distinguishment of like, this person is Christian. This person is this, this, I think like mm-hmm. a lot of that is honestly post post Protestant, like us reevaluating other religious systems through a Protestant Christian lens, which mm-hmm. often leads to us misunderstanding them. So like for me, I don't really even necessarily see them as different or see, I mean, I obviously acknowledge that the traditions have distinct elements and distinct flavors and that's important. And as Western people, we can't just take on these things and completely dismiss the differences because that part's important too. Um, But yeah, I mean, like a lot of the time it just comes down to like, I I look at it in the terms of, to go back to what you were saying, uh, (laughs) Because I've been influenced a lot by Sikhism too. And I've heard them say often that like your job isn't to convert people. Your job is to make a Christian a better Christian, a Muslim a better Muslim, a Sikh a better Sikh. And so I try to know enough about all these from both talking to people and both from my research so that hopefully I can give somebody something to elevate them regardless of whatever path they're on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I like, I think I would like to think that like I have acquainted myself with the Bible well enough that if I, that I can explain what I've learned in Sufism through just using the teachings of Isa or Jesus, you know, peace be upon him. And so that's my, that's my, my brother, my this, this, this is great. This is exactly what I was looking for. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like in the Sufi path, right? And even Sheikh Sufi says this, that when I, when a Hindu meets me, I tell him I'm a Hindu. When a mm. Christian meets me, I tell him I'm a Christian. When exactly. a Muslim meets me, I, because you're a mirror reflection mm. and, and, the, and the shake is basically you put a mirror in front of a shake. So what you reflect onto him is what he'll reflect back onto you mm. because you're, you're all a mirror reflection of each other. And there's a stories of even the prophet peace be upon him following this method where he, he would say that I am your mirror. So mm. depending on the frequency you emit, that's how the shake will return that back to you. So, <laughs> right. so you, you got you have to be on top of your game if you want that good reception and feedback coming back to you. And this is absolutely perfect, my brother, what you have shared. So for those in the West that are interested in, let's say, Sufism, what advice would you give them in terms of making sure that they're finding a legit and real shake, order, tariqah, and whichever way you perceive that question what advice would you give them so they're they're not led astray in any way? I think the thing that I've seen mm-hmm. is you can if you watch somebody long enough, uh, you're going to see the difference between somebody who wants to collect disciples mm-hmm. and somebody who wants to make other masters. Yes. And that's something that I've seen both from Sheikh Sufi in a positive sense. And I've also seen very much from like Wahid. Uh, who you've interviewed several times like he's a great example of that in the sense of like he's wanting to give people he's wanting to make other masters he's not he's clearly not a disciple collector but you do see those people in the west too it's like you know they're trying like i don't know any other way to describe it other than they're trying to collect disciples Uh uh-huh Whereas, like, I mean, I know from, like, my experience with Sheikh Sufi, if you go to him enough for certain practices, he's going to be like, okay, just, like, if you go to him for an I Ching reading enough times, he's going to be like, <laughs> let me just teach you how to read the I Ching for yourself. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of yes. people who have other alternatives or other motives who aren't going to do that because they they want you to keep coming to them. They mm. want you uh, to keep uh they want to keep taking from that situation and they want you to be subservient to them. And I think if you watch somebody's character, you'll quickly see the difference between those two motivations for doing that. If that makes any sense. Oh, thank that. Thank you, my brother. And you know, this is what I always tell people that I love dearly, including yourself is when somebody tells you who they are, you believe them. And that Mm -hmm. is the ultimate truth because universal law, will never permit anybody to put a facade in front of you and somehow some way 
they have to reveal themselves to you. That is how the universe works. They cannot, with whatever shade that they might be wearing, they will, they, it will kind of like leak out who they really are. And that is very important. You, we need to have that discernment. And it's like that saying that if you teach a man how to fish, he will know <laughs> how to do it for the rest of his life. Instead of you just fishing for him and giving it to him, he's not going to learn that way. So in the Sufi aspect, experience is the best teacher. You could read all the books, articles, and listen to all the shows and stuff. But if you're not going to do it yourself, that's not going to hone that warrior mystic within you. And that is so important, my brother. And I, I, I thank you for sharing that. And Sheikh Sufi and Sheikh Wahid are perfect examples where they want you to be the masters, the one who has sat with someone who has sat with someone. You could pass that with somebody else who will sit with you and then they can sit with somebody else. So it's like this silsila, it's like this chain of mm. these masters that's connected with each other. Because in reality, we're all walking each other home and we owe this love and light to one another, like what uh, Imam Rumi says. And it, it, it's, it's so important, my brother, because in these times, it's so much deception, division, uh, us and them, him or me, black or white, this or that. It's not serving any, any purpose. It's not serving anything. We must put all of this aside and realize, okay, what's going on in our communities? What can we do to come together and start cleaning this up? Education, motivation, upliftment. And you're right, not just religious institutions, all organizations that I see are hurting right now badly because people just don't want to deal with it. They said, okay, they just want my money. And okay, what else are they going to do for me besides that? Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're there, you're there to collect the money, but how are you benefiting me as an individual? How are you benefiting my family? How are you benefiting my existence and purpose on this earth, which is right now is kind of, uh, you know, in these scary times we're living in, you just don't know what's coming down the road. Um, and it's, it's very important, Caleb. And I, and I thank you, my brother, for this. And what guidance would you give from your experiences? My next question to the aspects of those that are feeling lost and hopeless during this time. Um, I think that that it, it's hard but i think to see that it is because i think like especially a lot of people my age who have been raised with like a particular narrative of like hey this is what your future is going to look like and it's very disheartening mm. to be like okay this is not what i was told <laughs> it was gonna be but i think like mm. as hard as it can be sometimes maybe look outside of the day-to-day -day of it and see that it is a point of transition of course and like we're going to no individual is going to be able to decide what we, it looks like at the end of that transition. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to have to come together collectively as a community. And we've got to decide are we together as righteous people, regardless of background, regardless of religious affiliation, going to come together and work for righteousness? Or are we going to let the people in power, in positions of power who put us in this situation in the first place, dictate what the next society or the next world is going to look like and mm -hmm. i think we have to come together and that's again that's not going to be easy and that's why we need the practice that's why we need that divine connection and that's why we need brothers because it's not unfortunately it's not going to be easy i wish that wasn't yes. the case but it's not going to be but that also doesn't mean that the fight isn't worthwhile you know mm -hmm. so just take I, heart I, I the agree. fact that we're fighting for we're fighting for something you know we're struggling for something it's not just for nothing, even if we can't completely comprehend that. I agree. And, you know, I thank you for that. And I, I'm grateful to you because of the role that you have played in my life in many ways. And it's, it's so important, uh, Brother Caleb. And it reminds me of uh, the story of the alchemist with Santiago. And, it, and mm -hmm. it teaches you that no matter what Santiago went through, some, if one, one calamity got replaced by a blessing, then that same blessing gets replaced by another blessing. And it just goes to show you that why God put him through everything while the real treasure was in his home the whole time. Mm. And it was, it was basically God's sense of humor. God can have a, <laughs> a beautiful sense of humor when he's trying to teach you something because it's going to take you all the way around. Then it'll bring you back to where you're meant to be. So please, my brother, any closing thoughts? And just please take your time with everything that I've shared and what you have shared. Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, I'm just grateful to be on the platform and I'm grateful for the work you've done, you know, I mean, Thank to you. put so many different voices out there. I mean, 
you know, to put to put all the different Sufi paths, to put Bomb out there at the forefront and all this different stuff that people yeah. are going to benefit from. So thank you for that, first of, first of all and foremost. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think as far as closing thoughts, just – just i would reiterate you know the importance of that balance between daily practice and working in the community i think that's yes. something that i've seen it's very easy for me personally and for people around me i've seen it's very easy to get focused on one and it often uh -huh. leads to a lack of balance you know it's very easy to get focused on the self cultivation to the detriment of doing the work you need to be doing in the community and it's mm -hmm. also very easy to be serving others to the detriment of doing the work you need to be doing on yourself which in turn ends up being a detriment to the community yes um so yes. i think it's not always easy especially in the society we're in where self-cultivation and service are not going to be the things that are encouraged mm -hmm. but if we diligently work toward that balance you're going to see a difference even Thank if you, it's not brother. easy at first Thank you. And w what would you say in terms of, let's say, the rest of this year and coming up ahead, why we must remain in unity, why we must love each other, why we, we must remain in some kind of a uh, grounded aspect of staying positive, knowing that better days are ahead? Yeah, well, first and foremost, you've got to ask yourself who benefits from us not being unified. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. like that should be the first place. Like, because obviously, because again, like it's like we are at a very critical point where, like, especially with social media, with all these different platforms, like things are going to be opening up, and there's really a potential for people who are thinking in alternative ways and thinking in, I was going to say new ways, but really thinking in old ways, uh -huh. are going to be able to bring these messages to the forefront in a way they weren't before i mean even like talking to some of my film friends who are involved in film like that whole structure of like hollywood and all of that is not there anymore like it's yeah. going to be much easier for another generation of artists to be able to get their message out there without it having to be filtered through the agendas of somebody else oh, and again, of course. As, as hard as the situation is now that's what encourages me is the fact that you know we're going to be able to get new narratives and get new messages out there. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to be essential to what we need to do to actually go forward. Thank you, brother Caleb. And it, and it's so true because so many people end up selling out and mm. in, in the aspects of going through the music industry or the movie industry, just to try to get their name out there. And Imam Ali says that he who sells dislike for the next loses either of them. Mm. So you're not that's not the right way to uh, put yourself out there and that's why these industries are breaking down little by little and why everyone with a medium now can get their message out there so my brother and friend i thank you dearly yeah Is thank there, you um, any uh, closing thought or a closing comment you would like to end this with uh just thank you and thank thank your audience and you know i think the community that you've built around this channel is wonderful and you know i hope that uh, we can all come together in unity and build something better out of all the destruction that's going on in the world now. Thank you, my brother. And uh, where, where can the people find you if they would like to make contact with you? Um, I guess I am right now, mostly on Facebook. I'm, you know, we've talked about it, you know, I'm eventually going to hopefully start doing some YouTube stuff as well in the next couple months, uh, God mm -hmm. willing. But yeah, just right now, I guess for Facebook under just Caleb Adams and, you know, send me a firm request to message me and, you know, people can feel more than welcome to reach out. So. All right. That's great. Assalamu alaikum, my brother, and peace be with you and yours. Thank you. Most definitely. I hope you have a great day. You too.